first, since we really don't know each other, I have no like background on you. So <laughs> I've only met you on Instagram. So can you please tell us like a little bit about your story and how you got started uh, uh, growing microgreens and then also selling them? Yeah, I would love to. It's nice to actually get to chat with you also. I feel the same. Like I know you from Instagram and other things, but um haven't actually gotten to chat with you. So this is yeah. great. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, so my story, basically, um, I got into growing microgreens, not to start a business, really. I was working as a registered nurse. That's my background is in traditional healthcare, working in the hospital, uh, at the bedside, working as a nurse. I uh, had my second baby and started really struggling with going to the hospital and being away from my a uh, toddler, 18 month old, and my very new baby. Uh, it just, it was a struggle. Um, for anyone who has become a parent, you find it radically shifts your priorities in your life, or at least it did for me. And I'd already up before that point started to uh, become a little bit less aligned with what I was doing every day at work. Uh, and that became harder and harder. And then when I had kids, being away from them um, and not being able to be present and just being worn out, exhausted. I am an introvert. So I'd use up kind of all of my energy with my patients and my coworkers at work and come home and just be wiped. And then I just got really tired of that. And I got really down. I got really um, just struggling, feeling really low, thinking this should be such a happy time in my life. I have these beautiful new children and um, I'm this mom always wanted to have this life and yet I'm not happy. And so I tried to think of things that made me happy. And um, I used to love to grow things. And I would kind of let go of that because life was so busy with these long shifts and just other things. Uh, and I tried to do a garden and I failed <laughs> completely because I was exhausted. Um, and it's really hard to do anything with an infant and a toddler. If you've been in that situation, um, I think you would agree. And so I really felt down about that. And then I found out about microgreens and was like, maybe I could do this. This looks doable. This is little, this is small. Uh, and so I started with these little windowsill pots. My toddler helped me. We filled them with soil, sprinkle seeds. And I loved it. It was so therapeutic for me to get into growing and something that I could see the results. So I did it kind of thinking, oh, my son will love it. And maybe it'll get him eating greens. But I'm the I mean, he did like it, but I loved it. It, it, it captivated me to watch and have these greens in my home environment. I grew them in my house on my windowsill. And I started to grow more and more. I scaled up into starting to grow into trays. And then I had lots of microgreens. <laughs> pounds and pounds of microgreens for my family and giving them away. And so I thought maybe I could sell these, you know, I'm watching YouTube videos and I'm learning and I found one local restaurant and they started buying microgreens for me from me. So that's how it started. It was very much a side hustle, right? I was still working, mm -hmm. uh, but it actually energized me to add this thing that I loved to my life. Uh, which was growing nutritious food. Uh, and that really helped kind of continue to shift me into more um, holistic thinking as far as being aware of how important, I mean, I saw evidence of it in working at the hospital, how mm -hmm. Western medicine is very geared towards attacking disease, right? Fighting off disease. Mm -hmm. um, and what I really longed for was putting my efforts into building wellness in our bodies and recognizing how amazing our bodies. I looked at my, my beautiful children's little bodies and just mm -hmm. how amazing and full of life they are and how strong and resilient and thought um, how much I want to just invest in, in that and in wellness and, mm -hmm. and starting with the very basics of what we're eating. And microgreens are incredible. If you don't, if you're not familiar yeah. with microgreens, uh, when we're talking about microgreens, basically yeah. a stage of a plant's life, right? So okay. this is the stage after sprouts. They're, mm -hmm. they're little seedlings. And this is when they're really concentrated with nutrition. They're also really flavorful and delicious and, mm -hmm. and all of that. So they are, um, the, the research is coming out and uh, this just gets me really excited because yeah. the, um, the vitamins, the minerals, the phytonutrients that we're finding out is 
they're so concentrated in these little greens that it is a huge benefit to eating them. And as people are learning about this and they're seeing it, um, the demand for microgreens is really increasing, which uh, is exciting because it allows us as small growers to have an impact on our communities by providing local fresh greens. I can grow these year round. Mm -hmm. uh, And so it's really a rewarding uh, enterprise. And I've just seen the demand increase uh, incredibly over the last uh, few years. So I know that's that's a lot. No, no, that's good. uh, No, I love your story because that's actually a lot of gardeners and homesteaders start off like, well, I needed to change my health or or I, I needed something different in my life. I needed not to be so overwhelmed with life and I needed to, you know, simplify and, you, you know, homesteaders and gardeners kind of, that's why they, you know, go that direction. And then they find out how much the health part comes after that, like their emotional health, your physical health just comes from this. Um, I was going to ask you what exactly a microgreen is, because there is a chance that people who are listening to either the podcast or in the uh, Homestead Income Plan group, where we're streaming live right now, um, uh, might want to know what exactly a microgreen is. So if you could just go back a little bit and tell us what exactly a microgreen is, and, and also because I've, I've done a little bit of research on this and I know that they have more nutrients than their adult version and why that is, is kind of like, I don't understand why that is. <laughs> so if you could explain that as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great question. And if you are unclear about it, don't feel silly at all. Cause it's mm-hmm. the norm. Even I live somewhere where microgreens are pretty prevalent and still I find a lot of people don't really understand um, what microgreens are. So there's a lot of confusion about sprouts and microgreens. Um, so sprouts are germinated seed, right? They're just they're sprouted seed. They're usually uh, grown. Maybe you've done them on your counter in a jar, usually in a very wet, dark environment. It allows that seed to germinate. And then you eat that seed, uh, the, the little germinated sprout and the roots, you eat it all. Very nutritious. Um, doing that on, your, in your, on a home scale for yourself is great. If you are um, looking about looking into actually selling sprouts, you will find that there's a lot of regulations. These are uh, considered a high risk food when you start scaling up the operation. What I loved about microgreens is microgreens are different than sprouts. Microgreens are the next stage in a plant's life. So almost any edible uh, vegetable uh, herb can be grown as a microgreen. It just means you are harvesting it when it is a seedling, when the cotyledon leaves have come out, those first seed leaves, and the true leaf, that center leaf, is just starting to emerge. Now, it depends a little bit on varieties. For me, most of my microgreens are harvested 10 days after I plant them. Mm-hmm. So they, it's very, they're very, very young. And this is why they're so nutrient dense. Like Mona was saying, um, we, their studies are showing some, some of the nutrients they found were like 40 times more concentrated than the mature version of, of that vegetable. Uh, for example, like a micro broccoli or a micro radish, you'll find that the nutrients are extremely concentrated. And this is because they're not diluted out into the, the plant yet. They're all the energy is coming from the seed itself. I'm not adding fertilizers or nutrients or even compost to my growing medium. All of the energy, you know, if I continued to grow it, you would see that this the seedlings started to cry out for nutrients. They turn yellow and you've probably seen that if you're a gardener at all. But with microgreens, we're harvesting them before they get to that stage, before they're needing to grab nutrients from the soil. So the nutrients are coming from the seed, which contains all of that goodness and from photosynthesis, from the light. Mm -hmm. So they're extremely concentrated at that phase of life. Uh, which makes them really fun. And yeah, you can grow almost anything as a microgreen. Some vegetables don't lend themselves to growing densely or being harvested that early. That's why you see some of the ones that are the most popular, um, pea shoots, sunflower shoots, radish, broccoli. Uh, But there's all kinds of microgreens out there that you can grow. And they are extremely flavorful as well. You can really uh, taste when people like the a pea shoot, for example, tastes just like a fresh picked pea from your garden. A radish shoot tastes like radish. A 
micro broccoli tastes like broccoli except it, it is even my kids love microgreens and they are very normal american picky kids uh, but they like microgreens there uh, so that that's a huge win for me as a mom too and i love giving that gift to other moms that are wanting to get their kids eating real living food this is a way you can do it especially if you involve them in growing because it's so great for little concrete thinkers they can see the seeds they can help water they can watch them grow every day they change and then they can actually eat them it's really exciting mm -hmm. yeah that 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 was actually the next question i was going to ask you how do you prepare microgreens to eat like what in what ways mm -hmm. do you ever cook them and that sort of thing i avoid cooking them um, mm -hmm. to just preserve the nutritional value of the microgreens so there is some um, degrading of some of the nutrients if you're you're cooking them for any length of time but my favorite thing is just to add them to almost everything i am not a fancy cook so a lot of people think of microgreens as something that a high-end chef would use they're very mm -hmm. fancy or gourmet they don't have to be they can absolutely be an ingredient in any of your regular dishes that you're eating. If people are brand new to them, I tell them to kind of think about where they use lettuce and start substituting microgreens for lettuce. So if you have lettuce on a sandwich or a burger or um, tacos or wraps, instead of lettuce, use those microgreens to get those nutrient dense greens that hopefully you've bought either from a local grower or you've grown yourself even better and you're getting that absolute uh, best nutrition that you can get. And it's so easy to incorporate. Uh, so I do have recipe guides and stuff because people always ask for inspiration. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I am a very, uh, I, I cook really basic family friendly meals. And I just add microgreens on top of things and add them okay. as a side. My kids eat them by the handful like they would eat cut up carrots or something. Mm -hmm. uh, so it does not have to get really complicated. You can put them on eggs, you can top your soup with them. You can top almost anything with them. I'd keep it really basic and really simple. You can get fancy for sure, mm -hmm. uh, but you don't have to. It's kind of what works for you. The important thing is just to get them into your diet. Yeah. Uh, so this may be a newbie uh, realization. <laughs> this is, but I didn't realize they tasted like their adult version. <laughs> yeah. I was just in my mind, because I don't think I've ever had like true microgreens. I've had like like uh, young lettuce and young mm -hmm. things, but not true microgreens. And I just assumed it was just like lettuce, like it would taste like lettuce or something. So I need to start. And and um, so that that will let's lead us to the next question, which is um, how long does it take to like set up a microgreen system? And like, what are the supplies that you need if you're just like someone like me who just wants to do it for the family and not necessarily a business? Yeah, you could probably do it this afternoon. It would mm. probably take you 15 minutes. Wow. It doesn't. It's not. It doesn't have to be complicated or fancy. Uh, when I first started growing, I think I grew in an old yogurt container that I cleaned out mm -hmm. and poked some holes in. Um, so yeah, you can buy specific trays. Of course, you can buy the the fancy nice things. You can buy specific things. You can buy a starter kit, a grow kit, mm -hmm. or you can just use. If you are a gardener homesteader, you probably have almost everything you need for microgreens. Mm -hmm. The one thing you want to think about if you're going to do this is purchasing seed in bulk. So mm -hmm. if you are, uh, when we seed microgreens, we are seeding them very, very densely. This is a hard thing for gardeners to grasp at first because it seems like you're using an insane amount of seed. So just buy a pound of seed of whatever kind you want. Mm -hmm. Buy a couple pounds of seed keep them in a mason jar with a lid on they keep nice and dry and it will last you you can grow a year's worth of microgreens for your family with that um, and it you know a pound of broccoli seed when you're buying it in bulk is going to be i don't know 20 dollars something like that so really yeah. expensive if you're buying a seed packet you're going to use that entire seed packet for one harvest one one pot of microgreens so don't don't do it that way if you okay. uh, but all you need is a container something uh, that will drain. I like to bottom water my microgreens. So I put a tray with holes inside a tray without holes. And I fill it with a mm -hmm. potting soil or seed starting mix. I like to grow in that. You can grow microgreens hydroponically. You can grow them on all, all kinds of things. But just keep it simple when you're starting. Okay. Use a seed starting mix. You're going to fill your tray um, to the top. Press it down lightly so it's a little bit compressed. You're going to sprinkle your seed. Uh, so it's almost, I mean, you're, you're, you're 
surface is covered with seeds. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of seed. Okay. Just, just you, you gotta just. Well, it, this it. question just came up from Joni about where do you buy these seeds? I buy my seed from True Leaf Market. Uh, they have a lot of options when it comes to microgreen specific seed. You can grow other seed, you know, just like a package of broccoli seed as broccoli microgreens, but certain varieties lend themselves better to microgreens. So if you buy seed that's marketed as microgreen seed, you're gonna have more success with it, growing it in the density that you're growing it. So True Leaf Market offers a lot of varieties of organic, non-GMO, microgreen seed and when you buy it in bulk it really is a low cost uh, way of getting really nutritious greens into your diet uh, investing in a pound of seed is such a great thing when i was growing my little windowsill pots that was kind of the size of a of a yogurt container i used about a teaspoon of seed uh, per pot okay. and so a, a pound of seed will last a long time when you're doing that and it will grow and you will grow in about a cup or two depending on the variety of harvested microgreens and remember these are very dense so even just a small amount on everyone's meal is going to help provide extra nutrients it also just gives you kind of that freshness and if you are looking for a way that you can start growing food this is a way that is it's probably the easiest simplest fastest way that you can start doing it year round right in your home and and it just connects you even that little bit connects you to something living that you are growing i let my kids snip off their own microgreens and add them to their plates and it's really rewarding uh, to do that way so true leaf market is where i buy most of my seed okay awesome yeah you're, you're making me want to just go and get some of my seeds and um i actually have very uh large front windows and i was thinking of just putting a uh, you know, a shelf up there. And I was like, I could probably grow stuff all year round because they're very large uh, front windows. Is that something like that would be a good setup for, for something like this? Yeah, that's how I started growing. I used to have to just turn my pots, uh, you know, when I walked by and saw them all kind of leaning like they'll do, um, I would just give them a turn. So okay. I cover them after I sprinkle the seed, I spritz them with water so that they're wet. I cover them with something and I actually either put a rubber band holding that down or put some kind of weight, whether you're putting a can of soup or a book or something to press a lid down on that, uh, on those seeds, it creates that nice moist environment. And so they will all germinate together at the same rate. Yeah. Um, after about three days, I'm going to take that lid off and then just expose them to light and let them grow. And in about 10 days, they're ready to harvest. It's really that easy. You're watering them every day, either bottom watering them if you're putting them in a tray or just gently pouring a little water around the soil surface down on the edge. And it's really simple. You will see once you start doing it, uh, how simple it is. Yeah, that's something I, I've said recently. Uh, like last year, I did a reel or something. I said, growing food is not complicated. <laughs> like food wants to, things want to grow. We just have yeah. to give it the nice bed and the nice space that it needs, and then it will grow. It's not really that complicated. I mean, you can make it complicated, but it doesn't have to be. So this sounds like like the foolproof way. <laughs> yeah, it learns so quick because they grow so quick. So even mm -hmm. if you do something wrong, just replant, grow mm -hmm. again. You know, you can after growing a couple cycles, you will quickly figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's it's really satisfying. Uh, gardening, sometimes, you know, you have to wait a whole nother season to try something if you realize something didn't work. Mm -hmm. With microgreens, just a week and you can yeah. start again. So you can learn very, very quickly. That's awesome. Well, thank you for giving us that little bit of uh, information. Um, we now we're going to move into i mean you gave us a lot of information i don't want to make that sound like you gave us a little you gave us a lot of information in a short amount of time but i wanted to make sure that we're asking the business questions because that's what this group is about so um what are like the you, you said the basic supplies to get started for home use but yeah. in a business sense what would you what would somebody want to start with yeah, if you're going to shift into growing microgreens for profit, I recommend uh, if you don't have space to grow horizontally, like you don't have a greenhouse or something like this, grow vertically. Microgreens do really well when grown vertically. What I mean by that is you just purchase a shelving unit. So you have a rack uh, and I 
I teach how to do this. I, it's hard for me to do it here because I, um, but I have a lot of videos that will show you exactly how to do this. Mm -hmm. So you're going to purchase a rack and actually put grow lights on each shelf. Uh, my racks hold four trays per shelf. So you can grow about 20 trays, depending on how many shelves your rack has uh, per rack, which is four feet wide. So it does not take up a lot of room. You can put this in a spare room or, you know, in your garage or in a shed, or I had a little one in my kitchen first, and then I moved it. We have a little storage room. I cleared out some space and I put it there. And that's why I first started growing for my first restaurant. So I had one order, $200 a week. But I mean, it took me maybe, I don't know, three or four hours a week to grow that. So it was very low uh, amount of time, which was perfect for me, 10 minutes a day to kind of water and check on my microgreens. Because uh, there's not a lot of work. The, the main work is harvesting and packaging. That's your, your biggest labor uh, piece. Seeding is pretty quick. You're going to stack those trays, let them sit for three to four days. You're going to unstack them under your grow lights on your shelves, and you're going to water them once a day. That mm -hmm. takes a few minutes. Uh, when it comes to harvest, you're going to harvest and package that depending on who your customer is. And um, it's it's really doable. The people, what I always recommend if you want to do this is keep it really simple in the beginning. Choose a few basic varieties that there is already a demand for. Uh, once you start getting in YouTube, you'll see there's all these different kinds of microgreens that people are growing. I recommend my top sellers and what I sell 85% of my business are three varieties of microgreens, all super easy to grow. Pea shoots, radish shoots, and micro broccoli. Those are my three top sellers. I've grown, I don't know, 60 different varieties, but those are the three that I make the most money from. They are the most consistent growers. They're easy to grow and there's a demand for them. Mm -hmm. So grow the easy ones to start. Choose one type of customer to market to. If you want to sell to restaurants, sell to restaurants. Mm -hmm. If you want to sell directly to individuals, do that. Mm -hmm. uh, try to just pick one to focus on at first rather than trying to sell to lots of different places. If you want to sell to a grocery store, do that. Pick one customer and really target in on who you want to sell to and start small. I always recommend keep things simple, start small, um, start with one or two restaurants, start with, you know, five or six people, uh, start with one grocery store and, and get your growing down, get really good at that, get those regular orders. Once you have that figured out, it's very easy to add more customers and scale up. You learn so much on that small scale when you're, the stakes are low and it's easy to, uh, to learn and figure things out. And then you can just scale up. Microgreens are very profitable. The margins are really, really good. So yeah. if you are looking for a way to just bring in extra money to fund your homestead, I don't know about you, but a lot of my homesteading endeavors are not profitable. In fact, mm -hmm. they're costly, <laughs> highly exactly. valuable, mm -hmm. highly valuable mm -hmm. to me and my lifestyle, mm -hmm. but not necessarily financially profitable. Mm -hmm. My microgreens help to fund some of those less profitable things that I still find very valuable. Mm -hmm. So I know for a lot of people, that's what they love about microgreens is it's a way that they can make money that's still aligned with their core values of nutritious food, uh, contributing to the local food economy and helping, you know, getting good food on people's plates, even your own families plate that you can provide year round when you grow these in your home. Mm -hmm. um, on a shelf with grow lights, you can grow them consistently year round, which means fresh greens. Even if you live somewhere where gardening is seasonal, you have those microgreens to offer in the off seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very doable. Yeah, it does. It sounds very doable. <laughs> it's like you're, you're convincing me <laughs> at least, at least to grow for myself. Um, so you were saying, uh, you know, choose one type of person to uh, sell to. How do you go about like deciding that? Is it just like look around to your local community and see who, who might need what you have? How would you go about finding those customers? Yeah, well, I would, I would ask who do you want to sell to? So mm -hmm. some people, they are foodies. They love you know, restaurant, they love that whole culinary world of restaurants. It's a natural fit. Maybe you've worked in the restaurant industry or you know people in the restaurant industry. Mm -hmm. That's going to probably be an easy fit. Um, if 
the idea of selling and stresses you out, maybe start at a farmer's market where you're not going to have that pressure to fill orders every week right in the beginning. You can kind of bring what you grow that week mm-hmm. and sell it. Um, or if you just love the idea of selling directly to people that you think would be really rewarding, you're going to get a higher price point, right? When you're selling direct to people, it's more work on the marketing end. So you're going to have to interact with a lot of people or reach out, explain what microgreens are a thousand times, but that's great. That is such a privilege to be able to educate people mm-hmm. and give them a practical, tangible way that they can start eating better and provide that for them. Uh, if you say, no, I don't want to do all that marketing. I don't want to talk to people people, then maybe you do want to look in a wholesale direction. It's a little bit harder to jump straight into selling. I sell through a distributor now, Mm -hmm. um, but I sold through all these venues before. Farmers markets, direct to consumer, to restaurants, to chefs, to caterers, to CSAs. If you have other farms in the area, this can be a great add-on item that you can sell. These are my favorite customers, CSAs. uh, They already have an audience of people that are buying from them that value Mm -hmm. local food. And then you say, hey, in the off season, winter, fall, uh, would you like to buy microgreens from me to conclude in your boxes? So Mm -hmm. some of it's just choosing who you who you want to grow for. If you're going to start this as a business, you want it to be something that you love so that it will be sustainable. So choose a customer base that you're going to be really excited to grow for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and my my group members and my podcast listeners should know that because I talk about that a lot. You do things that you love to do, and then it won't be as hard to do it. So if yeah. you if you enjoy it, it you'll 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 be invested in other ways besides just that it might make you money. You'll be invested in this is this is fulfilling me, you know. So same with choosing the the people that you serve, you know that it you it the the love for them doesn't run out you know <laughs> type Absolutely. of thing yeah so um so we have some questions from Joni who is here is asking more questions <laughs> but uh she had asked like what's the cost to get started could you give like a you know just a ballpark like how much yeah so for supplies um it's going to cost a if you're going to buy a rack and grow lights and get yourself set up with soil, trays, seed, you're looking about four to five hundred dollars for that initial setup for all your expenses. Now, I highly recommend you invest in a program. I, inv- I recommend you invest in my program. Mm-hmm. Um, it will get you profitable a lot sooner. Uh, but you don't have to. You can go slower um, and you can piecemeal information together. There's a lot of information out there. Uh, What I recommend, why I love uh, the idea of investing in a program, whether it's mine or there's other microgreens courses out there, is it's going to give you a really solid framework. Um, People, I just worked with a lot of people who easily get um, conflicting information. They get discouraged because things aren't working and they give up. So maybe they buy their supplies. They're trying to figure out how to do it. It's not working and they give up. And that always makes me sad. <laughs> Some of them mm-hmm. come into my program, and I'm so happy because all they need is that framework to follow and someone consistent that they can go to to ask questions. Mm-hmm. So my program, we meet together. I just got off the call. We meet together every week and go over questions. So everyone's kind of learning at their own pace with pre-recorded content where I walk you through. Here's how you set up your business. Here's how you grow. Here's how you market. Here's how you sell all those basic steps and you can go back and kind of work through them at your own pace. Uh, And then every week you can come or submit questions and get feedback. So as you're implementing what you're learning, you're getting answers. And this is going to help you to become profitable sooner. I know it can Mm -hmm. feel hard to invest more money and you don't have to, you can learn on your own. You can figure it out, but it will be harder. It will take longer. And I've just seen a lot of people kind of give up. Um, because they don't have that ongoing support. It, it can be hard, especially if you've never had a business before. You, a lot of people, maybe you're not getting people who are, seem interested and you just can mm-hmm. start to doubt yourself. So having a community around you who's saying, yeah, we're all, we, we get it. Here's what I tried. Or maybe you're having issues with your growing to have someone you can go through and say, let's troubleshoot. Let's look at this, this, and this and see what's going on. So initial mm-hmm. supplies for four to $500. Uh, I recommend you invest in a program that is going to teach you and give you the guidance that you need and the consistent uh, framework of information to follow so that you can start making sales so much quicker. 
Yeah, I totally agree with you on that because you can waste, you're actually wasting money by not just getting the education by somebody, you know, somebody who knows what they're doing. You're actually wasting money because your time is money and you could be possibly like investing in this and that. And then all of a sudden you realize you're paying as much as you would have if you just invested in initially. So I highly recommend it. And so this is a good way, this is a good time to share what it is that you offer and where to find that. And then uh, and then we're gonna go and ask the last couple of questions that Joni had. We're gonna- Okay. Uh, yeah, so my, uh, my program is only open through the end of the month right now, and then it'll be open again in um, January. So if you go to my website, handgrowngreens.com, that's my uh, microgreens farm, handgrown greens, you will see in my courses there um, that it's open for enrollment. There's a whole bunch more information. So if you go to handgrowngreens.com and you go to courses, make money with microgreens, then the, what it's all about is right there in the title. I'm going to teach you how to make money with microgreens, whether that means you want that one customer that's bringing in an extra 200 a week, or you want to scale it up so you can leave your job, it's going to show you how to, to do that, the whole gamut. You can choose what you want. So check it out on the website. Um, there's a whole bunch more information, but there are only a few more days for this enrollment period. But I'd love to get you in. If you're interested in doing this, uh, we have an awesome community of, of growers in there, uh, people who've been through the program and are continuing to be active in, in the community. So it's a lot of fun. Um, I love connecting with other microgreens growers. Yeah, that sounds awesome. And I'm glad we caught you before it closed. So that at least there's yeah. some time for people to make the decision. Um, but that was really just useful, great information. Also, if you're not following, uh, Laura on her Instagram, you should do that because she shares a lot of really great. That's true. I'm on Instagram also. Um, what I I had put your handle up in the group, but what is it again? Handgrown greens. Okay, that's your Instagram handle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. You'll find you'll find links to everything in in my Instagram. So if that's easier, yeah, just look me up on Instagram, handgrown greens, and you'll find information about my course um, and yeah. all of that there. Okay, awesome. Um, okay, there was this question, which is how long do microgreens last? Uh, shelf life on most microgreens is seven to 10 days. So on the more delicate microgreens of seven days on the more robust shoots 10 days, honestly, my microgreens last a lot longer than that. Um, it's all about perfecting the harvest. Uh, so harvesting your microgreens when they are well hydrated but dry what will make microgreens go bad quickly is if you're harvesting them and they're wet and then you're putting them in a package um, they they would just will not last as long but i will teach you how to make sure that you're harvesting them when they're at their prime and and then seven to ten days is what i package i put all on all my containers but honestly they're still uh they last much longer than that uh mm -hmm. but seven to ten days is what i my standard do you, answer. Do you have yeah. chickens by any chance? Do you feed the rest of them to your yes. chickens? The chickens love microgreens. <laughs> I bet they do. <laughs> okay, well, thank you so much. I think that's all the questions I have right now. And if anybody has any further questions, make sure you connect with Laura on either on her Instagram or go to her website. And we'll link all that also. You know, I usually take these videos and put them in a guide on our on our uh, group so that people can reference these, you know, how we have 207 members right now, but it keeps growing every day. So awesome. you never know, people could be, could be a lot of people by the ja time January comes. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. It's, yeah. it's such, um, such a great thing. If you are, if you have that homesteader spirit, um, this can be such a real aligned way of feeding your family better and making money. So I know for me, the draw was something that I felt rewarding and something that gave me freedom and flexibility to prioritize my family. That was my, still is, my my driving force is creating a business that allows me to prioritize that. I always said my family was my priority, but for years, if you looked at my day to day, it didn't look like that. So now with implementing and having my own business, I'm able to, to do that having uh, a flexible type of business. So yeah, it, it's possible if you're out there trying to find something, consider microgreens, it might be a really good fit for you. Yeah.
Yeah, definitely check her out. And thank you so much again. I know you're busy today, but thank you for squeezing us in. And yeah, just thank you so much. Yeah, it's been it's been a pleasure and honor to, to talk with you. Thank you for having me. Okay, we'll see you soon. All right. Bye, Mama. Bye.